Welcome. Today I want to talk about managing secure socket layer SSL or transport layer security TLS X509 certificates. Now managing certificates have always been a pain and with Kubernetes and the horde of deployments and pods, um, managing those hundreds or tens of certificates become really a big challenge. Enter Cert Manager. Here is the URL. Cert Manager is pretty easy to install. Just follow the ins installation instructions. But what I want to talk about is the concepts behind Cert Manager. And the central concept really is the certificate. Let me give you an overview. So we create a certificate which is a typical YAML kind of thing in Kubernetes, just like when you create a deployment. The short name, by the way, is CRT, CERT. Once you create a certificate and Kube Control apply it to your cluster, uh, CERT Manager will create a certificate request, and the short name is CR. This certificate request will be noticed by CERT Manager. Um, and you will have a pre-configured either issuer or cluster issuer or both. Now the difference between an issuer and a cluster issuer is an issuer is limited to a single namespace while a cluster issuer is not namespace and can apply to the entire cluster. Therefore, if you want something like a common certificate authority, for example, um, to issue certificates for the whole cluster, you should create a cluster issuer. Now the certificate goes to the issuer or cluster issuer for it to be signed. And when it is signed, a result will be a transport layer security secret. What kind of secret? A Kubernetes TLS secret. That's the URL. So in the Kubernetes TLS secret, of course the name will be a name you assign, right? and this is actually generated by a cert manager there will be two or three data keys um, in my instance i will show you there actually is a uh, certificate authority key but in this case you will always have at least the certificate and the private key so let's go through the process you want to create a certificate and you can follow this example. Um, I actually created it uh, here. So that is my example. Let's go through the fields. Uh, right now, the latest version is uh, Cert Manager 1.3 uh, with API version 1. And I'm going to create a certificate for example.com. <coughs> and this certificate is example dash. Um, labels optional I decided to label it test uh, it will deploy to my default namespace here is the important thing I want to generate example com TLS and that's the secret the TLS secret this TLS certificate will be valid for 90 days and cert manager will automatically try to renew it 15 days before expiring. The private key that will be generated for this certificate will be using the elliptic curve digital signing algorithm. Um, by default, it's 256 bits for ECDSA. And to follow best practices, every time you renew the certificate and a new private key will always be generated. It will be used for authentication for services. It can also be used for authentication of clients. Um, notice that I don't have a common name here. The reason being, I will show you the... In fact, I'll show, you, show it to you now. Under the Cert Manager version 1, Certificate, Certificate, you have uh, API version, of course, Certificate, metadata we know about it the certificate spec will consist of a subject 
Uh, the subject is an X509 type subject. This kind of thing. And it talks about countries, organizations, localities, provinces, that, that kind of thing. It's optional, so I will leave it blank. Common name is actually optional. Why? Because common name is ignored. Ignored. If any subject alternate name is set. And I am, I am setting subject alternate names here under DNS names. So in the Kubernetes cluster, we normally refer to our services like my service. So that's a short form if it's within the namespace. But if it's in another namespace, I will refer it by the full Kubernetes DNS name, my service, default service, cluster local. But these kind of services, uh, these kind of certificates can also be used for ingress. And these ingresses are facing the outside world. So in this case, I won't use my private CA. I would use something like an ACME issuer, ACME cluster issuer, like Let's Encrypt. ACME is the Automated Certificate Management Environment, that kind of thing. So Let's Encrypt is one instance of that. So it would be example.com or www.example.com. Now this is how it knows to contact the correct issuer. The issuer I've created is called the Certificate Authority Issuer, CA Issuer, and it's a cluster issuer. And finally, how many revisions of CSR, Certificate Request Signing Request, uh, do I want to keep? I want to keep three because I don't want to cluster, clutter up my, my Kubernetes uh, namespace. If you specify a number, it must be greater than one. If you leave this off completely, the default is to keep everything. So let me show you the docs. So we talked about subject, we talked about common name, duration we talked about, renew before, DNS we talked about. IP addresses can also be applied. It's actually appended to the subject alternate names, the same thing. Same thing for URIs. Email addresses and secret name, this, this is important, it's not optional. This is uh, this thing over here. The secret name, example comtls. Um, issuer reference we talk about. Um, the rest are pretty optional. Private key is optional. It defaults to RSA, but I specified it for elliptic curve digital signage algorithm. Uh, and revision history limit we spoke about. Okay. So let's run this thing, shall we? Uh, First thing I'll do is uh, let's clear this, lots of noise. So I want to get all certificates, all certificate requests, and all secrets. I don't want to limit it to app.test. So I've got some secrets already. But that's got nothing to do with, there's no TLS secret here. So let's uh, apply, apply our test cert local CA. And it's created. Example.com certificate is created. Now when I try to get certificate, certificate request, the certificate is created example.com it's ready and the secret is example com tls it's 10 seconds old there's a certificate request and here's the tls let's have a look at uh, that shall we so i can get the secret export it as JSON, pipe it to JQ, and look at the data TLS cert. It looks like that. Well, actually, it looks like that. What I want to do, is I get the raw output, pipe it to base64, decode it, and pipe it to temp cert. So I've got my temp cert,
I'm going to use a tool called CFSSL and it will just display the certificate info uh, of TEMSERT and pipe it to less. So now I didn't specify a subject. This is my local certificate authority. It's called local CA. Serial number, subject alternate names, my service, the full name, example.com, www, not before, not after, elliptic curve, digital signage, with SHA-256, and that's the certificate itself. Right, that's the end. So that's how uh, Cert Manager manages Cert. Now, let's do something here. Uh, let's imagine that uh, for some reason, well, a renewal has come up, but for some reason, uh, the secret got deleted. This TLS secret got deleted. Let's delete it and see what happens. Uh, so I'm going to delete secret example. This secret is about two minutes old. Secret's gone. Now, let's see what Cert Manager does. Secret is gone means my services are no longer having a TLS secret and they can't communicate securely. Let's see what Cert Manager has done. Hey, a new example com TLS has been created. And not only that, a new certificate request has been created to create this secret certificate. So that is the value which Cert Manager provides. Thank you for listening.